This is Pi Man, a recreation of Pac-Man running on the Raspberry Pi Pico. I've developed this game without writing a single piece of code. It was done purely through the magic of AI and prompt engineering. I've spent some time recently playing around with the latest version of ChatGPT. Every once in a while I get curious to see how much AI has progressed, and how far along are we before software engineers, among many other qualified professionals, start losing their jobs left and right. And well, despite some recent unfortunate cases, it seems like AI isn't fully replacing us just yet. Now, who's to say that might not change tomorrow? But despite this looming threat of rendering programmers obsolete, AI also provides some really cool possibilities and helps us approach software development in a different way. My first video on this channel was about me creating a portable video game console that is based on the Raspberry Pi Pico. I also used the help of ChatGPT to develop a few classic video game clones that run on this device, including Snake, Pong, and of course, Flappy Bird. With this latest version of GPT, I once again set out to recreate another classic video game. This time, Pac-Man. I wanted to see if the prompt engineering process was any smoother, and if I could create something a bit more complex from last time. For anyone who is unfamiliar with the term, prompt engineering is the process of structuring an instruction that can be interpreted and understood by a generative AI model. A prompt is just natural language text describing the task that an AI should perform. Similarly to software engineering, the key for prompt engineering to working well is being able to break down complex tasks into smaller chunks that can be addressed one at a time. These smaller chunks can then build on one another to form something much greater. So, when working on this Pac-Man clone, instead of just saying build me Pac-Man for the Raspberry Pi Pico, I started off by prompting ChatGPT to put a constantly moving dot on the screen that I would be able to turn left or right. After running the code and confirming the initial functionality was indeed working, I went on to prompt ChatGPT to add another feature, and then I ran the game again to see if that was implemented properly. And then I did it again, and again. And soon enough, I was able to add symmetrical teleportation when the player went off screen, wall collisions, a background maze, primitive enemy AI, a menu system, a level selection system, and even the ability to select the difficulty of the level by choosing how many enemies to spawn. All of these small individual pieces started forming something that resembled an actual video game. In a way, throughout the entire process, I was still the one that was ultimately building the features and deciding how the game mechanics should work. ChatGPT would just translate my natural language into a coding language, in this case, MicroPython. Then, I would just copy and paste the generated code into my editor. Now, overall, this new version of ChatGPT is definitely way better from before. The majority of the time, I was able to get the intended functionality from my prompts in the first try. And whenever there was an issue, I would often just need to provide more context or specify what was wrong when running the given code. Sometimes even just prompting try again would lead to a version of the code that was working properly. There were a few small issues, though. Firstly, for whatever reason, prompting GPT to generate a valid level structure was borderline impossible. I had to manually draw the layout of the mazes myself. There was no coding involved in that, but it was still a bit annoying. Luckily, the code that GPT generated allowed me to decide the position of the walls, the player, and the enemy by simply editing a variable. Secondly, the response speed of GPT seemed to be way slower than before. This is probably just due to the heavy load that their systems are experiencing at the moment. Unfortunately, whenever I wanted to add a new feature to the game, unlike before, I was no longer able to ask for the full updated code, but rather only the relevant code pieces that I should replace or add into the game. Otherwise, the generated response would often stop midway through, and I'd need to retry the entire prompt again. In conclusion, AI is becoming better every day, Software engineers have a new tool under their belt, and it is now much easier to get into software development than ever before. The potential downsides? Total annihilation of the human race. Or, you know, losing your job to a robot.